Thank you, Kayla. All right, well, this morning we will be discussing some state government election results, including legislative seats, governor's offices, and state executive positions. We will also be examining the electoral impact on state government trifectas, as well as taking a look at the results of some notable ballot measures. We're going through a large amount of information very quickly this morning, so keep checking ballotpedia.org for updates. As we move through this morning's webinar, we will also be paying special attention to the down ballot impact of the presidential vote with respect to state legislatures and executive positions. Prior to the election, Republicans controlled 33 state house chambers and 36 state senate chambers following large gains over the last six years. We'll look at whether the party's defensive efforts allowed them to hold on to control this election cycle. So let's begin this morning with a snapshot of 2014 state legislative outcomes alongside our 2016 results. As you can see, we have the total number of seats up for election as well as the number of incumbents seeking re-election. Those elections took place in 87 of the 99 legislative chambers across the United States in 2014. We also have the total number of fresh faces elected to state legislative seats. These newly elected legislators won open seats or they defeated incumbents. Ultimately, 92% of incumbents won re-election in 2014. As a result, 11 state legislative chambers flipped to Republican control. Nine of these chambers were previously held by Democrats, while Republicans gained an outright majority in two chambers where they previously ruled by coalition. The resulting total was 69 Republican chambers and 30 Democratic chambers. In 2016, we also have the total number of seats up for election, as well as the total number of incumbents facing re-election. These elections took place in 86 of the 99 state legislative chambers across the nation. As of now, more than 1,200 fresh faces have been elected to office, and that's a pending number, so be sure to check back at ballotpedia.org. We have chambers that flipped. We had two Republican chambers flipped and three chambers flipped to Democrat. So that leaves a total of 68 Republican chambers, that's a pending number, and 31 pending Democratic chambers. So taking a closer look at those flipped chambers, a flipped chamber occurs when the partisan control of the state legislative chamber changes to the opposite party. Flips can also occur when the partisan control shifts to a tie or moves away from a tie. So in 2010, 21 chambers flipped. In 2012, 12 chambers flipped. And in 2014, there were 11 chambers that flipped. In 2016, Ballotpedia identified 20 state legislative battleground chambers. 13 of these chambers were Republican controlled and seven were under Democratic control, which you can see we have them outlined here for you at the right. Five chambers so far have flipped partisan control. We have them here, um, the Iowa Senate and the Kentucky House flipped to Republican control while the New Mexico Senate, the Nevada Senate, and the Nevada State Assembly flipped to Democratic control. The down pallet impact of these flipped chambers is interesting because all these flipped chambers are actually in line with the state's presidential vote. Now, how did the state legislative elections we just examined impact state government trifectas? A state government trifecta occurs when one political party holds the governor's office, a majority in the state Senate, and a majority in the state house. As you can see from these maps, leading up to the 2014 elections, there were 12 Democratic trifectas and 24 Republican trifectas for a total of 36. Following the election, the number of Democratic trifectas dropped to seven, while the number of Republican trifectas remained the same. In 2015, the number of Republican trifectas dropped to 23. So we had a total of 30 state government trifectas leading up to the 2016 elections. Here we have a map of our post-2016 election state government trifectas. 18 states were identified, as possible, were identified as possible trifecta changes during this election cycle. Six states had changes in their trifectas as of this morning. These states include Iowa, Kentucky, Nevada, Vermont, Missouri, and New Hampshire. As of this morning, the 2016 trifecta count stands at six Democratic chambers and 26 Republican trifectas, excuse me, six Democratic trifectas and 26 Republican trifectas for a total of 31. There are still five undecided states that could potentially be trifectas and those are in purple on your map. We have Minnesota, Montana, New York, North Carolina, and Washington State. Now, interestingly, when we look at state government trifectas that were at odds with their state's presidential vote, 
We see that in 2012, seven states cast presidential votes that were at odds with their state trifectas. Those states were Florida, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Virginia, West Virginia, and Wisconsin. In 2016, though, no states differed. Clinton did not win any Republican trifecta states, and Trump did not win any Democratic trifecta states. On the gubernatorial front, there were seven open races in 2016 and five incumbents fighting for re-election, which you can see on the map in the top right corner. Prior to the election, there were 18 Democrats, um, 31 Republicans, and three independents serving as governors. Following the election, there were 14 Democratic governors, 33 Republican governors, and one independent governor. And this election cycle, four Democrats won election and six Republicans won election. We have two states that are still pending. Those are Montana and North Carolina. So looking at the down ballot impact, we had West Virginia actually voted for Trump, but they um, voted a Democratic governor into office. And then on the flip side, we had New Hampshire and Vermont that actually voted for Clinton, but they voted in a Republican governor. Moving over to state executive offices, we had 189 elections across 25 states in 2014. That number dropped in 2016 to 93 elections across 23 states. Republicans appear to have a net gain of three Secretary of State seats and one Attorney General seat. Those Secretary of State seats are in Missouri, Montana, Oregon, and West Virginia, where Republicans won seats that had previously been held by Democrats. In New Mexico, a Democrat won a seat that had previously been controlled by a Republican. These results are generally in line with the presidential vote, except for in Oregon, which voted in a Republican Secretary of State, but voted for Clinton in the presidential election. So we had a number of notable state ballot measures this election cycle, including nine state marijuana ballot measures. Of those nine, seven as of now have passed. Recreational marijuana measures passed in California, Massachusetts, and Nevada, and we're still waiting to hear from Maine. Medical marijuana measures passed in Arkansas, Florida, Montana, and North Dakota. In addition to marijuana measures, several other notable ballot measures went before voters this year. In Florida, Amendment 1, which was regarding the use of solar power, was defeated. In Massachusetts, Question 2, which referred to authorization of new charter schools, was defeated. Um, it's interesting to note that California had 17 statewide ballot measures this election cycle, and so far nine of them have passed. All of the minimum wage measures have been approved. And looking at Prop 61 in California, it's interesting to highlight that opponents raise $109 million, and the measure looks like it will, in fact, be defeated. So with that, I will turn it over to questions. Great. And I just want to add, um, ask Caitlin or Jeff or whoever if, there's, if there are any like really interesting results last night that we haven't been able to cover yet that you want to touch on. Um, and if not, we have another question, which is, are you counting North Carolina governor as Republican or Democrat? Undecided right now. So uh, it looks like uh, that race is going to go to a recount. Cooper is currently in the lead, which would uh, move that into the Democratic column. But the 33 Republican governors that we are currently counting uh, does not include McCrory. So if uh, if by some chance the recount took place and McCrory did win re-election, then that would um, add to the total and make it 34. Um, it looks like Cooper has the lead right now, uh, but it's a, it's a slim enough margin that there will likely be a recount, which probably wouldn't give us the certified results until uh, probably about November 18th. Great. Um, another, oh, um, another question. Um, in terms of state legislative gains, how would you compare this year to 2010 for Republicans? This is a, uh, an interesting year. 2010 saw more than 500 seats swing uh, in Republican favor uh, and 20 chambers flipped in their control. They were working from behind in 2010, so they had a lot of room for growth. This year, uh, Republicans were expected to be on the defensive in state legislatures. I think there were articles published as recently as yesterday morning uh, saying that there could be as many as a dozen 
legislative chambers flipping uh, from Republican to Democratic control. Uh, as, we, as Caitlin pointed out earlier, that, that didn't transpire. At this point, with a few chambers possibly outstanding, uh, Republicans have flipped two chambers in their favor. Democrats have flipped three, so it's a net uh, minus one for Republicans. Um, overall, it looks like they will have a um, about a net gain of maybe 60 to 70 seats, depending on how it all shakes out. So that would be that significantly fewer overall seats swung, flipped in their favor than in 2010. But in a way, uh, it's, I mean, one could almost say it's more surprising because Republicans this op, uh, election cycle were operating on the defensive at the state level. Uh, there really wasn't anywhere else for them to, to pick up too many more seats. So as it relates to 2010, it's probably just a continuation of that wave election cycle. Uh, this election didn't demonstrate a uh, retreat of any of the significant gains that Republicans have had over the last uh, three election cycles, where they've they've turned more than I think 900 seats in their favor. Does that answer your question? Cool. Yep, it does. Thank you. Um, great. Ooh, we have a lot of questions coming in. Cool. Um, someone's wondering if you can say a little bit more about the trifectas in 2012 versus now. And what does it mean that state trifectas are a leading indicator of where the presidential election will go? Oh, yeah, sure. Good question. Um, so over the last um, se several election cycles, the number of trifectas has been trending up in terms of overall numbers of trifectas, and it's also been trending more Republican. And it's it does seem a little bit representative of this election. Um, I, I remember watching the results last night and most of the commentators were saying things like, Trump has penetrated the blue wall of Michigan or Trump has penetrated the blue wall of Pennsylvania or Florida or Wisconsin. And the interesting thing with trifecta is, is that those states have been Republican at the state level for several election cycles now. So the fact that Trump was able to win those states last night it just sort of raises the hypothetical question, are trifectas in this case being an indicator of overall changing trends in uh, the voting blocks within some of these states? Um, I think I answered your question. Your first part of your question was, what is the, the changing dynamic of the, the map from 2012 to 2014? Uh, and it's just that, um, yeah, just, just to repeat it, more trifectas, more Republican trifectas, and fewer Democratic trifectas. Um, one thing that we might see as a result of that, um, there were a number of states with ballot measures this cycle where uh, Democratic and progressive activists were putting ballot measures on the ballot in front of voters because of the number of Republican state legislatures that prevents any kind of progressive or liberal uh, lawmaking via the legislature. So they turned to the ballot. And, that might that trend might have another uptick as uh, more and more states are in uh, Republican control. Cool, great. Um, then we have another question. Were there any state legislatures where Republicans had previously controlled both chambers and then they lost total control of both of those? Yes, Nevada. Nevada. Yeah, Nevada. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Nevada and New Mexico are interesting because they they are. They seem to be representative of uh, Hillary Clinton and the Democrats just in general did very well in Nevada and New Mexico last night. Um, they won, in Nevada, Hillary Clinton won the state. They won the U.S. Senate seat. They flipped the U.S. House seat in their favor. They won both of the state uh, legislative chambers and flipped those in their favor. So that's just an interesting, you know, I'm sure Nevada will be analyzed to try to get a sense of what made Nevada different than the rest of the country. Um, Nevada at the legislative level has flipped over the last several election cycles. It's kind of gone back and forth from Democratic and Republican control. Uh, but the assembly was, a that's probably the biggest surprise. That was not one that we had thought was going to be uh, a battleground. We thought the Senate would be close, um, but the Nevada State Assembly wasn't something that uh, was being talked about as a chamber that could flip. But uh, every election cycle, there's always something that, uh, comes out uh, out of nowhere. Great. Um, cool.
Cool. Wow, we have a lot of questions coming in. Okay, let's go back to this one. What is the incumbent retention rate? Was it higher or lower than in other years? It's kind of early, but it looks like incumbents um, were reelected at a significant, not I would just say at a, at a higher rate than usual. Um, we don't have all the figures in yet, but in the last few election cycles, there are typically around 250 incumbents defeated in the general election, something like maybe 92% of incumbents win re-election. That figure seems to be higher right now, where there might have been fewer incumbents defeated. Um, but I kind of want to take a closer look at the data before we make a definitive statement there. Um, but it doesn't seem like there was any kind of, you know, like uh, Chris mentioned this in the earlier webinar this morning, there wasn't a huge throw all the bums out sentiment down at the state legislative and state executive level. A lot of incumbents, um, like in most election cycles, uh, won re-election or weren't facing any challengers. That happened, that happened about 40% of the time this year. Great. And then another question, did Republicans lose any trifectas? Yes, Republicans lost. Um, let me pull it up. Um, Republicans lost a Nevada trifecta, uh, and they will lose a trifecta in North Carolina uh, if Cooper uh, ultimately does hold on to the governorship. Great. And then an even earlier question, how is it that Trump being a Republican can make state and local elections favor Republicans? Is it that some people simply vote Republican and that's all included on one ticket, straight ticket voting, I think? Some states have straight ticket voting. Uh, and one of the interesting things that uh, often comes out after the election is, was there an uptick in straight ticket voting from prior years? Um, that's something that uh, you know can get looked at in the days and weeks ahead. Um, yeah, I guess uh, I think your question is kind of just about how how strong were Trump's coattails? Uh, were they strong? Um, did they extend down the ballot? That was something you know we were kind of curious about coming into this election. Um, it, it's a little bit. It, it's hard to say. There were some really disparate results, honestly, across the country. Where you know, in, in Florida, where a lot of the talk is. Trump won. Um, the state legislature actually saw Democrats pick up a couple of seats, I think. Um, the Republicans are still a majority there, but Democrats made, they made headway. Uh, in Kansas, uh, Republicans have significant majorities in both legislative chambers, but the Democrats picked up some seats um, in Kansas. So you, you have some states that uh, have some interesting trends going on. It, it's not, you know, it doesn't seem like it was entirely straight party voting across the board. So lots of fun data to, to crunch in the days and weeks ahead. Cool, great, thank you. I think those are all of our questions for now. Uh, I just wanna remind everyone that we'll be doing another webinar like this tomorrow at 9 a.m. Central talking about local election results. So that will be exciting. Um, we'll have those all already in for you guys. And then um, if you guys have further questions, please reach out, editor at ballotpedia.org. We're also on Twitter at Ballotpedia or facebook.com slash Ballotpedia. And thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Let us know if there's any, any other questions we can answer for you all. Thanks.